take a ride on a bus in Linköping in Sweden? It seems like any other bus. Except this one's not run on diesel, but the contents of a dustbin. Some of the waste comes from the local hospital kitchen. Scraps of unwanted food, now a precious fuel resource. A truck comes to collect the food and takes it to the city's biogas plant, where it's fermented in giant digesters, along with waste from local food factories and a slaughterhouse. The result, a gas, which is used to operate the entire fleet of 65 buses. The minus uh, is that they are more expensive to run. They're about 25% more expensive and they are also more expensive to buy. But we get a grant from the government, so that helps out. But the positive thing is for the environment. Biogas is the most environmentally friendly fuel in existence. It adds no new carbon dioxide to the air. And Linköping has seen other pollutants, nitrogen oxide and soot, dramatically reduced since the project began six years ago. With waste food running the buses, this is what's heating local homes. Household rubbish and wood chippings from the forestry industry, used to fire the huge central furnace. These district heating systems are widespread in Sweden. Encouraged by government grants and tax breaks, half have replaced their oil or coal burning fires with this renewable biomass fuel. A network of underground pipes carry the hot water from the central plant to heat most of the homes in Linköping. I think it's very good that you can cast soap or I think it's great that we can throw our rubbish in the bin and then have it come back as hot water. It's how things should be. The beauty of this system is that it does two jobs at once. It deals with household and industrial waste while providing a clean, renewable energy. Back in Stockholm, the government has been tackling energy issues head on. Sweden has none of its own oil, coal or gas reserves. And it's phasing out nuclear power. It needed alternatives. The obvious choices were hydroelectricity and biomass. We have used biomass for a very long time. And this is an indigenous source of energy and it's renewable. So it was very natural for us to, to go on this track. Already, Sweden is a world leader with 15% of its energy created from biomass. The key to its success is pure and simple taxation. Fossil fuels are heavily taxed, renewable energies are not. We have tax incentives. Since this is a renewable source with no CO2 emissions, we have no CO2 tax on biomass. We also supporting alternative fuel made out of biomass with tax reductions and pilot projects. One project supported by the government is this urban housing development in Stockholm, well known for its green credentials. Thomas has just moved into one of the apartments with his dog Casper. Today, lucky Casper is having meatballs for dinner cooked on gas, which comes from the local sewage plant. I think it's uh, interesting that they're trying new, uh, new ways how to uh, recycle what we, you know, flush down the toilet, gets back or, uh, in, in the oven or, or in the stove, so we can uh, cook food of it. Um, and, uh, well, and I like to be part of, of uh, you know, the new society that they're building here right now. The biogas is cleaned, made to smell a little sweeter and piped back to nearby homes. But most importantly, it's used as a vehicle fuel. And because of the tax exemption, biogas is up to a third cheaper than petrol. Sweden has set a target to reduce CO2 emissions by 4% by 2012, way beyond what's demanded under its Kyoto commitments on global warming. And while elsewhere in the EU, levels continue to rise, in Sweden, they're not. There are countries such as Spain and Denmark and Germany, they are ahead of us as regards, for example, windmills. So we can learn from them in that area, and we have come far in other areas. Far enough to enable 25% of Sweden's energy to come from a renewable source, compared with a European average of just 6%. 
an indication of how one government's commitment can make a difference.